Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to Terra Nil. This is a new, relaxing puzzle strategy game. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. It just came out last week, and the idea of the game is we are going to be arriving on a planet that is devastated and turned into sprawling wastelands. Our goal is to restore the climate and turn it into a lush paradise using some advanced technology. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's one of those games that I think classifies under just challenging enough you feel like you have to kind of think through a problem, but not so hard that you feel like it's a free fruitless efforts and you have to try again and again. Not too frustrating, just relaxed, but still a little bit of a brain teaser. Let's go ahead and jump into my main game. And here you can see that we have a few different climates in the world. I've already accomplished a little bit of terraforming here in the River Valley, but I didn't quite accomplish everything. I'm going to jump back into this and use this as an example for how this game works. So jumping back into this map, the game is first going to tell us that there are a few different goals. First step into any restoration endeavor, restore the water and the plant life. We need to get the toxins out of this world one way or another. Hello, airship. Yep, this thing is going to be landing, and boom, now we have some starting resources to work with. So I don't even know what you would call this. It's kind of a leaf currency here. This represents some of the ecological points that you can use. And right now, because I've accomplished a tutorial, I have access to pretty much everything I would want at my disposal. The first thing you always want to do is place down some wind turbines. These are going to give you the power you need to activate a lot of your other buildings. So let's place one on the rocks, let's say, right over here. Then you want to place down some toxin scrubbers. This is going to take the toxins out of the soil and make it fertile again so we can activate some light down there. So you usually want to place this in an area where you can get as much value out of it as possible. So if I were to place, let's say, something up over here, and then maybe another one over here-ish, eh, it's still not great, but it's kind of the best I'm going to get. Notice we are spending some of our currency for every one of these buildings we construct. So we don't want to go absolutely ham on this and place them everywhere. You do need to place a little bit of thought into what you're trying to do. So for example, by placing these all four around here, we've got a lot of fertile soil built up. Now what I can do is place down an irrigator. Now the irrigator, we can rearrange this in several different ways, kind of like so. Because I did kind of the square pattern, it might make sense to go ahead and do something kind of like this. And you can see it's gonna go ahead and start irrigating some life into this area. And we'll do the same thing down here. I'll rotate it around. We'll try for something kind of like this. You can see how many points we're going to get back. Now, every time we restore a piece of land, we get some of that currency back. So you're spending ecological points to gain ecological points. Out of all of this, I ended up getting 25 points back. Right now, we need to restore a certain percentage of the world. So let me go ahead and do that first. Now, there are a few other things that we can do to kind of get a little bit of extra greenery out over here. We do have access to a water pump. This is going to take some water out of the earth and put it into some dry riverbeds. So if I were to place something like down here, for example, we can see that it would affect this entire downstream area. Often a good idea to place it up high if you can, just to get full advantage out of like a waterfall or something. There we go, and that's greenifying pretty much everything that makes direct contact with the river. So this kind of thing can pay for itself to some degree as well. And that is good enough. Okay, so we've got enough greenery. Next thing is we want to start creating some biomes. Alright, so that opens up a second tier of different technologies. Though you will still need to use some of the tools from the first. And we didn't even cover everything here. So one thing we could do is use a calcifier, which actually is going to take some of the rocks, uh, sorry, the greenery that's over here that we've already created, for example, and it does turn it into some rocks. Using that, I could go ahead and place down, let's say, another one of these windmills, right? So there's those kind of things you can do. Plus, there's also something here called an excavator. And an excavator would be a tool to dig out some additional trenching. So this could be a way of expanding out the river if you need to. Though it does tend to hurt the environment nearby. So it's always a little bit risky to do that. I don't think I need to do this right now, so we're going to ignore it. I just kind of wanted to show you that this is an option. So going into the second tier, there's a few things we can do now. And some of this is going to be counterintuitive, but it takes a little work. So we could place down a hydroponium, which is going to create some wetlands in a lot of areas. And you can see that this is going to generate a lot of extra points for me. Has to be placed kind of close to a river in a lower point. That's not too unsurprising at that point, is it? Uh, expanding out more rivers and stuff kind of would help with that too, as you can imagine. The other thing we can do is place down things like beehives in some of the trees that already exist. So like right over here, for example, place this down, and all of a sudden we've created a bit of extra space for ourselves, right? And this is nice. But then with this, what you can do is place down a solar amplifier and deliberately set all of this on fire. 
and it's going to be controlled burn that destroys literally everything that the fire touches. So if you don't have any trenches dug between any of these areas, then you're probably going to have a lot of stuff burn. But that's not a huge deal, because then you can place down arboretums on any buildings that were destroyed and set up a new lush forest. That is something we're going to want to do. But let me go ahead and start by placing down like just a few more of these beehives. Oh, we should also consider placing down a research center in an area that I don't think is ever going to go through a controlled burn. So like this, for example, would make some sense. That's going to make all these lower tier buildings a little bit cheaper. And also you get something that's going to be a little bit less obtrusive. So a much smaller, for example, excavator is probably not a terrible thing. We could go ahead and do this, just kind of expand out the river. So I'm going to go ahead and do this here, for example. We'll do that. And then, uh, let's see, we have a couple other bonus objectives. So up here at the top right, you can see that the humidity is increasing, and that's actually a top goal for us. The higher the humidity gets, in general, the better for us. We do have other things that happen, like getting fungi in forests, ferns on the riverbanks, etc. At 70%, the world starts to rain, and when it rains, it starts actually removing the toxins and purifying the world for you. But by the time we get to that point, I want to have finished a lot of our controlled burns and dug out whatever I think I'm going to dig out. So that's not a top priority this exact second. I should also note that sometimes your water level has to be within ideal conditions, and if you do that, you get some bonus points. So the irrigator right now, we are in the ideal condition for humidity. If we increase it a bit more, not a big deal. If we increase it too much, well, then we're going to stop getting some of those bonus points, which is probably fine in the long run. But what I want to show you now is a controlled burn. So let's go ahead and do something like this here. We want to create this tall brush. Then I'm going to go ahead and place down a solar amplifier, and all of this is going to get destroyed in a bit. We'll place this over, let's say, here. I think that's going to be fine. And then we are going to click on it and set up a fire right along this area. All right, so it's going to blaze through everything here. And this looks awful because it's going to destroy these buildings, and it's going to destroy a lot of the local uh, grasslands and stuff. And it feels bad, but it actually is good. So with this done, we can now place down the Arboretum on one of these destroyed structures, right? Like this one right over, let's say this one right here. And it's going to go ahead and create a lush forest over in this area. And with that, I'd be able to place down additional beehives. If, of course, the land is already irrigated, which until the rains come, is not going to be as consistent as you'd like. Something I'm deliberately doing is I just burned off this top of the hill, knowing it's a very small biome, just so I'd have new trees grown so I can place down new beehives so I can open up this area, which means now if I want to set up a second solar amplifier, I can do that, set this area on fire, and this is all relatively contained, and there's going to be a lot of opportunities to grow more forests over here. Is this kind of making sense? And the goal up here in the top left, as you can see, is we want to fill in a certain amount of the tall grasslands for the bees. We want to have a certain amount of forest. We want to have a certain amount of wetland. So we're going to have to do this at some point anyway. Okay, we now have enough forests, technically speaking. So let's go ahead and start setting down some wetlands. I'll go ahead and place something over here. And it's recommending one over here. That's fine. Can we place down any more? One over here. I guess that's all right. I don't think it's enough, though. We may need one more set of rivers. Oh, wait. Actually, this might do fine. Um, yeah, but let's go ahead and first get a little bit more soil fertility, just so I get a lot of extra value, and I guess we could set up... This is not This is going to pay for itself, I guess. It's not by a lot, but it is going to pay for itself. Sure, fine, we'll do this. Then I'm going to go ahead and place down another one of these rounds of wetlands, and boom. All right, we've now met all three criteria. Now, the game is going to say, with the plant life and the climate reestablished, the next goal is to build an airship so we can recycle our buildings. We've placed a lot of our own human structures in this climate. We now need to erase our presence, right? However, I'm not quite done with what I've already been doing. I do want to start getting a lot more humidity. So using some of these ra uh, rocks that already exist, we're going to go ahead and start increasing the humidity of the air as much as I can. See, we got ferns and riverbanks. Good. We're up to about 57%. All right, we can get an extra 3% down there. It's not good enough. 2%. 8% over here seems pretty decent. Uh, and then there's 13 right here. Well, that's perfect. All right, so rains have now begun. Now we're just shy of the 90% that I'm looking for here. I don't have any additional rocks to work with that I can see. We get 2% over this direction. Not quite enough. Though we can place this. I mean, it's not like I don't have some extra points, but this isn't good enough for what I need. So we might need to go ahead and dig out another large trench in the river. And we can do something like that right through here, for example. Calcify the area, right? We're using some of our calcifiers. Get up another one of those atmospheric generators, cloud seeders. 
There we go. This last 6% around here should be enough. Okay, that takes care of all the humidity. We're up to 94%, but the salmon run has now begun. That's going to be worth a lot of extra ecological points. All right, with that all done, let's go ahead and move on. Though I will want you to notice, see that you can, the uh, world is actually cleansing itself. The rain does a lot of the work for you. So now we want to place down an airship, and it needs to be placed close to the rivers. We'll go ahead and place you right over here, for example. That's fine. Now, in order to build up our airship, we need to recycle everything we've constructed so far. I need to place down a recycling drone in the river. So we can go ahead and do this right here. And then we can start placing down recycling silos, and you can see that it's going to go ahead and just take apart all the buildings within its radius. Ultimately, we would like to tear down everything already close to a river. I'll explain a bit more about why in just a minute. But like right over here, for example, is a perfect thing to do. We go ahead and place this, and it takes down all the buildings and shoves them in over here in the recycling silo. So the reason that matters is this little drone is going to gather up all of the materials, and it can only travel by water. So what we need to do now is place a loading dock, which will also tear down anything in range. So something like this, for example. But it also tears down the recycling depots you've already got. So let's do something like this, for example. We'll shut this all down. The drone's going to go travel along the river like this. With all of that torn down, we send that all back up to the ship, and we're making 19% progress right now toward recycling. You have to get everything off of the map. But because I gathered all this up, now I should have access, yep, there we go, to this recycling area. So I can place one down here since I've cleared the path, and everything that was in this area now gets taken away. This is where having a lot of extra rivers is helpful, so you actually have access to everything. Otherwise, you have to start digging a whole lot of extra rivers, and it becomes kind of challenging. Like this, for example, I'm not totally convinced is going to be in range. Ah, never mind, there's actually a river over here. That should be fine. Now, to get to this river up tall, we need to place down a lock, right? So we can do that to access um, some of the waterfalls, like right here, for example. And that's the way that the little drone is going to be able to get up high. While the drone's doing that, there's something else we need to worry about, and that is getting animals out over here. So I'm going to place down this little guy right here, this little observatory. And using this, we can now click on this menu at the top left to discover animal species. Now, I've already found three, but I want to find the rest over here. So this gives you a clue as to what kind of climate these guys like. For example, the waterfowl really like some large lakes. Let's try to do a scan of this area and see if we can find an area that's got sufficient water. So right here, for example. Not quite enough. It's not really a lake. All right, what about this, for example? Is that good enough? No, not really. Where can I find a huge reservoir of water? Oh, there we go. Okay, this was enough, and as a result, we see that the goose has now set up its nest in this area. So that's one creature. Every creature has different requirements, though. So you may have to deliberately craft the terrain in such a way that you know you can get the animals. Deer, for example. We wanted to leave behind at least some grasslands, so if I do this, that should be enough to, yep, spawn in some grasslands. Okay, fine. Frogs, these guys like to have this area, so we'll go ahead and do something like that, perfect. Bears like to be up on a hill with forests, so something like this and a beehive nearby should be about perfect. Let's go ahead and set that up, excellent. Now I just need to find the other two. An industrious rodent, that sounds like a beaver. A river and a forest, that sounds like this. Will that work? Yep, there we go, okay, and then, a predator that likes prey. How about close to the geese? Something like this? Nope, that does not count. What about close to the deer? Uh, okay, deer do count, but we don't know what the other requirement is yet. It has to be near a forest. And see, this is where I didn't set up a forest. Therefore, we either need to set down some more deer. So maybe something like, how about this? There we go. Okay, so we get more deer spawned. And then close to a forest and also close to deer, like this? Mm, not quite enough forest. Hang on, can we do this? There we go, we found the noble timber wolf. All right, that's all six creatures. So the only thing that remains now for this map is to clear out all signs that we were even here in the first place. So that's everything, I think. Yep, we're back up to 100%. We've accomplished all of our objectives in this area. We should now be ready to launch our airship and get out of here, knowing that we've done a good job in restoring this wasteland to its former beauty. At this point, we can continue on to the main campaign again, or we can just appreciate our work, but no, nah, we'll go ahead and move on. Like I said, it's not so challenging that you feel like it's frustrating or you get lost, but it does require at least a little bit of careful planning and thought. You know, you want to make sure that you're actually planning accordingly. So everything is uh, completed here. It looks like it is. All right, let's go ahead and move. Why does it still say 70%? Do I need to do this one more time? Maybe I do. 
Yeah, probably. But you know what? Let's go ahead and move on to another biome. Let's go to a tropical biome. I haven't touched this yet. So it should be more or less the same thing here, I think. Uh, we need to place down some wind turbines in a couple of areas so we can get a decent amount of power coverage. I'll use this for now. We need some toxin scrubbers, which it looks like... It looks like we do clean out part of the ocean as well, and that gets me some of my points back. So that's a little bit different from what we did prior. But I also still need to get as much of the soil cleared out as possible, too. So we need to do both. That's fine. Okay, that's about as efficient as I can get with some of this while still leaving some room for some controlled burns if I need to. Now we go ahead and work on some water pumps and restore the river. Hmm, it's not quite enough though, I need more rocks. We could use, interesting, not the calcifier or whatever it was before, but now the mineralizer taking pieces of the ocean to create some rocks. Okay, sure. Doesn't get me any greenery exactly, but, I mean, it does help to at least clear out more of the ocean, and that got me access to a sand bank. Okay, we can place down an island for some buildings. Interesting. And there we go. That's enough greenery. All right, so now we move on to the next stage, which means we want beaches, mangroves, and tropical rainforests. Also, apparently, there is a monorail network which transports coral polyps over to the sea. Interesting. I don't know what that means, but we're going to find out. So let's see what's actually needed here. We have the hydroponium, which does create some wetland. Okay, that seems like a natural first thing to do. And by doing so, we unlocked something new, the salinator, which increases the salinity of an area allowing for mangroves. Okay, so we're gonna take the wetlands and we're gonna turn them into mangroves. Got it, but the temperature is not high enough. This is not able to grow at the moment. You can see that down here at the bottom right. So we need to find something else. I need combustors. Combustors, what are those? This thing right here burns the surrounding vegetation to increase the atmospheric temperature. Interesting, okay. Well, if I were to place these around the wetlands, or at least the grasses, we can see it does increase the temperature a fair bit. So nine degrees Celsius right here, for example. Fine, fair enough, let's go ahead and burn this area. Okay, at least it's a nice controlled burn, so that's not so bad. Uh, still need a bit more temperature, though. We can just burn some of the basic grasslands. How's that? That doesn't feel like it's too high of a cost. I'm gonna have to plant down some more grasses just so I can use that to turn into more beaches, it looks like. So something like this, for example. And yeah, there we go. All right, we're, we're working on it. We're getting there. Okay, that should take care of our beach needs, and that creates something new. There's the monorail. All right, so we're going to be spending a fair bit of our points in order to start putting together a monorail network, and we have to get over here toward the ocean. Maybe this is something that becomes more obvious a little bit later as we go. Tell you what, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is start actually getting the humidity up. So let's go ahead and make use of these cloud seeders and try to get a bit of rain going for us, especially around the ocean. This seems to be a lot of value. There we go. Oh yeah, now we've met all of our goals here. We've got water lilies blooming and everything. Okay, so if there's going to be any rain, it's gonna happen. We do have apparently an issue where I have too much heat to get things like moss on rock faces. So apparently I did this a little out of order and it would have been smarter to get the water up first, then raise the temperature. All right, didn't know that, but good to know. Okay, that should be enough burn there, up to 41 degrees now. So I'm not gonna get the moss on the rock faces. If we can get a bit more water, I'd be able to get some thunderstorms up and running. That's probably a good idea. That should be enough. All right, so we're missing out on one, that sucks, but thunderstorms now begin. What else have we unlocked here though? We got something else. We unlocked the shade cloth pillar where we'll be able to start growing some trees. Interesting. So if I place down a couple pillars like this, oh, interesting, it's got kind of this actual triangular pattern. So we place something like this here, and yeah, okay, tropical trees are starting to grow in ideal conditions too. Oh, I see what I'm supposed to do now. Okay, I wasn't totally getting it. So you click on one of these nodes, and then you can click on, let's say, a building, and then you can move it anywhere else that you want, right? You could do something like this. By moving one thing, even if I didn't need to do it, we've activated the monorail network, and now I've unlocked the Coral Lab. And with the Coral Lab, we can place that over some of these existing buildings, like this, right? And then we can click on the transport node, click on the Coral Lab, move it over, let's say, 
here, and that's 64 more points going into my pocket as soon as these things arrive, which should be in just a little moment, right over here at this node. It activates, and there we go. So we should start seeing that coral is going to be spreading. Perfect. All right, there we go. Hey, look at the little jellyfish. How cute. And now all I should have to do is start placing down a lot of tropical trees, which using the power of the triangles already existing shouldn't be too hard to do. There we go. And that's enough. Okay, perfect. Now we move on to animals and clearing up all of the damage, well, all of the human markers that I've left in the world. We'll start by placing the airship close to the monorail network, since it seems like the monorail actually can do a lot of the recycling for me as well, which is interesting. And we do, of course, need to be getting things like an animal observatory set up as well. So let's go ahead and do that first and see if we can scout for some extra critters. So it looks like a sea turtle wants an island where it can retreat. Well, that seems fine. What about right here? Okay, not quite right, though. Um, it needs to be on a beach as well. Got it. Do I have a beach island? Uh, don't know about that. Uh, apparently this counts. Okay, that'll work. Moving on to the next one. What do we have here? Um, glides in the ocean near river estuaries. And how about this? Will that count? Not quite. It does like the coral reef and the ocean tiles. Ah, it wants river tiles. Got it. Okay, river and coral, huh? I don't know that I have anything that quite fits that. Maybe I do. I guess the alternative is to go ahead and deliberately place down a new coral reef in an area where I have some ocean, a river, and other stuff nearby. Sometimes you gotta keep the terraforming going, you know? You're not quite done yet. Let's do something like this. Is that gonna be enough? There we go, we got the manta ray. Moving on, we got boards. Okay, they wanna have um, some tropical forests and stuff, and also no buildings in range. Actually, I think that maybe these poles count. So we can't do this one until we do some recycling. Fine. All right, sand and mud of wetlands. Both, how about this? Will that work? Not quite enough wetlands. How about this one? That's a flamingo. All right, sharks want coral and also mangroves. How about this? That counts. All right, moving on. Uh, a mammal in the deep waters far from land. Okay, how about far off in the corner? That's a whale. All right, now we can start recycling. What do we have over here, by the way? Ah, big recycler station connecting to the monorail network. Got it. So now we can place down some recycling beacons in a few key areas. How about something like this? Get a lot of our points back. We also have access to a rock hopper, which moves rocks. Oh, good, because I was kind of worried it would be impossible to get a monorail in this location. So that's how we unlock that. And now that we have some clear open sky, I should be able to do one last sonar ping so we can get the parrots. How about that? And boom, all right, that's all the critters. A little disappointed that I didn't get the moss, but if I can recycle everything, we actually should be more or less good to go. Okay, is there anything that I am missing? It doesn't look like it, so just this last little bit of monorail, kind of like this, boom, and boom, and we are done. We have managed to terraform and restore a full island. All right, let's go ahead and lift up the airship. So let's see, did we make a lot of progress in this area? Yeah, actually, that's 68% progress over there, okay. Only missed one of the climate thresholds. And what does it unlock next? A polar region. Oh fun. Unfortunately, in the interest of time, I do think we want to be ending this video in just a couple minutes, but I can show you at least a couple of clips of what the polar region looks like, and it's a very different challenge. You have to control magma flows to set up geothermal power so you can melt the snow, so you can get things set up, so you can then refreeze everything. It's uh, very different from the previous puzzle and a little bit harder. This game does kind of scale up in difficulty pretty well. Not too hard, like I said, it's still pretty relaxed, but it does make you think a little bit, and I think that that's one of the strengths of this game. So that's a taste of what Terra Nil looks like, everybody. I do hope you find that informative. Now, I will say the one thing that I think is unfortunate about this game is it is $25 in the Steam Marketplace, and I think you could probably 100% everything within about mm, six, seven hours in total. So kind of up to you as to whether that is worth the amount of money. But if you are interested in that, there will be a Steam Store link in the video description down below. My name is Promise. I do hope you found this video informative and helpful in some way. If you did, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.